Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Arkey. I'm the head of communications for Steemit. And today on this episode of the Steemit podcast, I'm here with Eric Johnson, co-creator of Cash the Game. He's gonna tell us a little bit about himself, the game that he's building, what makes it so exciting and special, and then we're probably gonna talk a little bit about why they're choosing to build their game on Steam. You were on Ethereum. You were doing all this work in smart contracts, you talked about the importance of speed and feelessness. So I was wondering if you might explain whether you look, whether you considered migrating to EOS, which is similar in many ways to Ethereum. It's kind of a hybrid between uh, Steam and Ethereum. We don't think that means it's better, but perhaps right. you could explain whether you, whether you looked at EOS and why you made the decisions you did with respect to that protocol? Yeah, I think EOS is, is, is a very impressive, uh, like you said, hybrid between something like Steam and something like Ethereum. Um, you know, I think down further down our roadmap, we'll probably do a similar type of thing with Ethereum where, you know, if you want your item to be on the EOS blockchain, uh, you'll have that option. Um, Ultimately, I think there's a there's a slight uh, component or there's a major component that is uh, slightly missing and why, you know, ultimately why we made our decision to kind of move further towards Steam. And that was the the overarching community aspect. Um, and obviously that that starts with Steam it, but it's it's really baked into Steam. And I mean, the Steam tagline is powering communities and opportunities. And all of my interactions with the steam community have been very community oriented. So it's not, it's not that I haven't, you know, we looked at, I, I think EOS on a, on a technical merits are, are very high and they do have a community. They do have a community similar to Ethereum um, where, you know, they're, they're doing a lot of talks and they're doing a lot of um conferences and, and, and meetups. And so we definitely want to, one of the cool things is we, we, we can, we can partner with, uh, we can make it an option to basically use those chains as, as you know, the demand is, is there, but for, for us, the, 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 the decision to go to steam is ultimately, you know, partially about technology, but partially about community. I do think that there is something that kind of gets lost when it comes to the discussion of the community because it ties back into the technology and the simplicity of the technology. The community is only there because there are developers developing apps that they love using on it. So the question kind of has to be, well, what's up with this community? Developers had smart contracts in Ethereum. EOS is bringing their own twist to it. But I would suggest that there's still something missing from EOS, which is why I think that we will con continue to outpace their growth in terms of community, which is that we focus on integrating the smart contracts into Steam that developers really want in a protocol. When, when people were coming to us and asking us to add smart contracts to Steam, we would always ask them, what do you want to do with your app that requires smart contracts on Steam? No matter what they said to us, we basically always had the same response. Internally, we would look at the situation and our blockchain developers would say, they can do all of those things on Steam using the existing smart contract and then custom JSON ops. Inserting code in JavaScript into custom JSON ops and using that to add that additional layer of functionality to their app. And that's what we're now calling soft consensus. And that is critical for offering a great freemium user experience because we have to bound the number of smart contracts that are executed on chain in order to ensure that the average user can do all the transactions that they want to do because as soon as you unbound it as soon as you start allowing developers to run any kind of crazy smart contract that they want on the same platform you're gonna start having costs spiral out of control, be extremely volatile, and somebody's gonna to have to eat that cost 
whether it's the gas fees on Ethereum or the costs of RAM and CPU on EOS. And so Steam simplicity is really a feature, not a bug, and is critical for sustaining the type of transactions and interactions that are required in order to fuel a large and rapidly growing community. Does that make sense? Am, am yeah. I way off base? No, you, you, you are totally on base in this sense of there are things that we can also do because of the openness. Um, if, 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 as long as you start to accept that you have, the layer is a soft consensus layer that um, are much, you basically get a speed of iteration. You get, a, you get an openness as well. Uh, to basically be able to develop features in the way you want. Uh, Solidity is a, is a decent language. It, it, it's okay. And, but you're ultimately bound to the constructs of not only that language, but the sort of the way that you uh, have to basically build smart contracts. So you don't, it's, it's a lot, um, you don't have the speed of iteration. You don't have the ability to, uh, you know, you're not as flexible and you're not as agile in that, in the context of Ethereum smart contracting to it as you can be uh, with steam. And, you know, you're also, like you said, you're, you're, you're kind of using, you know, JSON and, and you're kind of, you can kind of use the language of your choice if you want to build a library around that to basically uh, do what you need to do, which obviously provides you with massive, massive uh, development, uh, efficiency or, or productivity um you know you don't have to basically have this whole different context with solidity you don't have to um you know you have test networks uh which are nice but you don't have to you know if you make a if you publish a smart contract in the ethereum context um you better be sure that you know it's very very well tested because you're going to um you know you're going to be running into uh problems if it's not and we've seen that with you know the completely immutable nature of smart contracts is that there's just been um issues with with people not being able to fully audit their code and seeing the consequences of that so um you know i, I think that's something you can overcome and i think there's 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 a benefit to immutability um which we want to provide as another layer in our game but ultimately when we want a lot of transactions to happen fast and we want to be able to to publish them in the way that we want to publish them that's where steam comes in yeah and i would be remiss were i not to mention the fact that there are at least one maybe two or more projects on steam now that are bringing smart contract like functionality i don't know if you've looked into them one i think is called stratos um mm -hmm. another is called uh, Scott, but the or, or Steam Engine, Steam Engine yeah. and Stratos might be the same thing. Have you looked into those just out of curiosity? Yeah, so we we plan on um, using Steam Engine for our token side. So um, you know, as I mentioned, there's you know you trade in-game cryptocurrencies. There's um, ten in the game currently, and so each one of those is going to be a token. In the if you were to if you know anything about Ethereum and the in the Ethereum context, they'd be like ERC twenties or you know um, fungible uh, tokens. Um, so um, I think you know the Steam Engine project was created. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, mostly, or at least partially, by Matt Rosen of Steam Monsters. Yeah. Yes. And so I spoke with him, and you know I've and he's been a huge liaison um, and wonderful help uh, to us. And um, so anyways, we, you know, I was talking to him about, okay, we you know we have different use cases. We have items, you know, but we also have tokens and tokens ultimately um, fit the use case of steam engine where we can produce these tokens. We can set, you know, in this case, we'll be minting them on demand, but you can set like a, um, what do you want to call it? A, uh, you know, the, the currency amount, the amount uh, in the pool, um, and you can do a lot of the, pretty much all the things you can do with the ERC twenties, um, on steam engine. So that's, that's definitely a platform that's, it's pretty developer friendly and also sort of, um, 
again, Steam Engine sort of taking that ERC-20 concept, which was, was a Ethereum smart contracting, contracting concept, and moved it into the Steam realm and given, given a platform and given a structure uh, to be able to do that. So that's really cool. And so that's how we're planning on kicking off the, the, the token side of cash. If we're going to shout out uh, your first opportunity to get pre-registered with the game, obviously go to cash.gg. Again, that's C a c h e dot g g um all you got to do is just put in an email address you know pr preferably use your steam connect address or whatever you're using for there but you know just some way and then you'll get a free in-game item and you can connect with us on steam it at cashverse like a universe but with cash so that's c h c a c h e verse uh connect with us there connect with us on twitter again cashverse um, and also, you know, we're really excited to, to build on Steam and um, really excited to integrate within the community that's fostered on Steamit. So we are going to be community focused and we're also opportunities focused and, you know, really ultimately cash is going to be a world where you can be yourself, grow and obviously be rewarded with community and most importantly, or not last but not least, uh, crypto. So thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming on the Steam It podcast and for joining the Steam community. Thank you. Thank you.